Hey everyone, the name is Erikdor and today we're talking about ENTJ personality type. And yeah, sure, the ENTJ is extroverted, they're intuitive, they're thinking and they're judging. But forget about that for a second. Truth is, ENTJs are only extroverted as far as they are intuitive. They are only thinking as far as they are judging. Every personality type, every personality trait has to be synchronized with the other personality traits in the mix. In flow, in a flow state, the ENTJ has to mix and combine all these traits as one and as soon as they lose one they lose their flow. They lose some energy, some momentum, some motivation, some control or in some personal stability. Becoming more turbulent, more anxious and more prone to stress. So what the ENTJ needs to do is they need to look at and learn their personality traits and interests and hobbies and make these interests and hobbies their own. They have to gain mastery of their own core skills and learn to put them to practice. Now ENTJ is, and I implore you to learn the cognitive functions in this, a connection of different personality traits and you have to study these traits together. For example, an interesting thing to study is extroverted thinking. When talking about ENTJs, extroverted thinking tends to come up first and extroverted thinking is what makes the ENTJ a natural leader, a natural boss, somebody that can assert dominance and authority, somebody that can show results to back up their decisions, somebody that can show reasons and uh, pragmatic data and can make observations and can bring evidence to the table for every decision or an action they take. They can explain to other people why they're doing what they're doing and why it's a good thing. They can show the value, the quantity, the measurements. They can show the data that will back up their arguments. And that's perhaps why ENTJs are not always seen as intuitives. The fact that they can provide strong reasoning and logical data and viewpoints to back up their arguments that goes somewhat against that trait of intuition that we all know, you know, thinking of uh, intuition, we think of spiritual woo-woo, we think of sudden in realizations that come out of nowhere that cannot be explained. And that's true, you know, the more you go into data, the more you go into proof, the more you go into evidence, the more you go into sensing. But what the ENTJ does, and this is a shortcut, is they look for different kinds of data points. They look for different kinds of evidence and reasoning that they can use to make their ideas seem valid, even if they're not. So the ENTJ has the ability to rationalize pretty much any conclusion that they are drawing from any situation. Now these conclusions often come from extroverted intuition. Extroverted intuition is an important process in the ENTJ and one that ENTJs are often exceptionally good at. They are constantly drawing from and analyzing patterns around them. They are connecting the dots, they understand different chains of events, they know different potential consequences of different decisions, they can see and read and room to get an idea of what is happening. They are up to date on new information, they are usually well read, they've usually read a lot, they actually have a lot of statistics and data and evidence and information to back up their arguments and what they are saying. A lot of the time these are loose connections, quickly drawn, it's a skimming, light skimming of a book, it's the uh, quick read of a draft, it's the quick opening or analysis of uh, something somebody told you, but it's not the complete picture. So often ENTJs skip a few steps here and there. Yeah, you have a blind spot, you skip a few steps here and there. You tend to get a bit lazy, You sometimes you feel a bit drained by all the data and all the information and all the evidence, so you skip a few steps. Steps, but you have a lot of steps and here's the thing you have a lot of steps extroverted intuitives they are and they have taken a lot of different steps they've left a lot of vacuums and a lot of holes in every reasoning point and in everything they do but they've gone and they've been to a lot of different places they've tried a bunch of different things they've run experiments they've tried gotten some trial data some new numbers they've gotten some trends and some ideas of possible events that will come they don't have everything, but they have some of it. And something ENTJs have is that natural ability to make anything sound convincing. If introverted feeling types and INFPs, for example, and ISFPs struggle to get anybody to listen to them, struggle to uh, get anybody to take them seriously, the ENTJ is naturally taken seriously, even when they are joking. So that's a superpower, your ability to be understood and your ability to get other people on your side just because you sound very sure of yourself. 
Now, ENTJs are intuitive judging and thinking judging types. That means they're often very future oriented, where ENTPs and ENFPs sometimes get lost in different potential connections in the moment. The ENTJ always has this idea, this mindset of goals, projects, and steps necessary to be taken. They always have a plan, they always have an kind of system in their head for things they have an idea of where to go and how to get there and then they are making connections and drawing patterns that will all line up together so the ENTJ is always trying to get everything to line up together this is why stereotypically they're confused with introverted intuitives that ability to draw patterns put them together and voila Here's a project, here's an idea, here's an ambition, here's a venture, here's a business project, here's a plan. The ENTJ's ability to turn various ideas and loose connections into logical steps to be taken, their ability to organize their reasoning and to put and verify the strongest argument first and the weakest argument in the middle, their ability to put things together and see, okay, how do I plan this out, what do I do first, what resources do I need to do it, how do I get there, What? how much do I need to get there. That ability is uh, something that makes the ENTJ the kind of intuitive that is able to plan for their intuition to come true. So often the ENTJ, like the ENFJ, is known for unrealistic goals. That's a problem they have. They set unrealistic goals. They uh, overestimate how far the organization will grow. They uh, overestimate the results they will get from a decision. They overestimate how many things they are able to do at the same time. ENTJs have a problem of overestimating everything constantly and constantly being disappointed by the data. They get an idea, they see a plan or opportunity, but what turns out to be the truth is not always as nice. What things end up happening always don't feel that nice. So there is a struggle here in disappointment and feeling disappointed and easily disappointed in others and in yourself. That ability to feel disappointed by the tribe for not getting where you thought they could, for people not living up to the potential they had, for yourself to not live up to your own potential. Those things are all valid concerns that you're going to be wrestling. Now, the ENTJ is a tribe first person. They're extroverted. Their first core priority is what is the tribe doing? And how are they doing it? Are they doing it effectively? Could they do it better? Often because of this, the ENTJs are more focused on other people than on themselves. While INTJs tend to make themselves known for having a big personal plan or goal or ambition, the ENTJ's plans are usually for a company or for a group or for the tribe as a whole. Their ideas are more all-encompassing and group-encompassing. They are naturally going to involve other people in their projects. They're usually not going to work alone. They're usually going to try to get other people on board. They're going to sell their ideas. They're going to put their ideas on the market. They're going to take the temperature. Okay, are everyone on board at this? Does everyone agree with this? Does everyone think the same way? The ENTJ is looking to test and argue forward to see if their arguments are valid. Where the introverted thinking type would get stuck in their own head trying to analyze for themselves what is right and wrong, the ENTJ prefers to have a conversation or an argument with other people to determine the value and the effectiveness of different arguments and different actions. So what they're looking at is that core Does this add up? Do the numbers work? Have have anyone done an experiment on this? Does anybody know anything about this? Has anyone done this before? And they're always scattering this kind of data from the world. They're looking at what other people are doing, the strategies other people are taking, if they're successful or not, where things are going, how they're getting there, how fast they're getting there, what obstacles people get stuck on. You know, here's the thing. ENTJs, they get stuck on obstacles all the time. A problem here, though, is they easily get overwhelmed by these obstacles. You know, where a perceiving type is usually effective at improvising on the spot and coming up with, okay, I'll go there instead and I'll try that out and I'll do this. The ENTJ becomes kind of obsessed with this obstacle. They're hitting at this obstacle. So they hit it again a little bit harder. And then they hit it again a little bit harder. You know, they they have the tendency to uh, do the goat style, you know, punching heads against other people just to see where... Uh, who will break first <laughs> and getting breaking through the obstacles they can be known as st- steamrollers in a sense 
Now, I have a lot of personal experiences with ENTJs, both in business and workplaces and in personal life situations. Something I've always noticed is they're quite intense people. Now, this is my personal perspective as an INFJ. I have noticed ENTJs are quite intense. So often, when you talk about ideas with ENTJ, the ENTJ is very quick to take action. Let's do it then. Okay, great. That's a good idea. Okay, let's take action. Let's make it happen. So go, let's go, go, go. Let's go and do it. The ENTJ is very quick to go from an idea to a plan of action and to attack immediately, skipping perhaps a lot of parts in between. A surprising thing about ENTJs is that they can be quite quick to physical contact. Most ENTJs I've met have been quick to punch me in the back when I've done something good or to jump me with a big hug, squeezing their cheeks against my face just because I'm nice or because we just met a few times and yeah, we've gotten along and yeah, they're in a good mood. The ENTJs, uh, you know, intensity is... Uh, very prevalent in most meetups and encounters. They're usually full of fire, they're usually up to something, they're usually going somewhere, they're usually got a plan or an idea, you know, you never see them stop. I've seen them run around with big signs and I've seen them always busy. I've never seen an ENTJ just chilling, just sitting down and just having a talk and just taking it easy, you know. <laughs> the thing about ENTJs is that they're an engine that's always running. Now, in personal situations, it's also something I've noticed that how we will keep flaring up into discussion and argument. Almost everything you say to an ENTJ is an argument or a dis discussion to be had. There is no, um, there is no playful, uh, just uh, uh, going through and discussing something in a friendly way. It's always, uh, is that right or wrong? Do we really mean that? Can that really work out? Is that gonna fix itself? How do you mean with that? It's always an, a desire to engage in discussion and conflict and playful conflict. For them, conflict is play and that's a huge need in them. They need to have discussions to get out their need to play. Now, what people never expect, and I don't know how this stereotype came about, is they don't expect the ENTJ to be nice. They uh, expect the ENTJ to always be in a bad mood or to always be a bit choleric and a bit aggressive and a bit angry. But truth of the matter is, I've mostly encountered ENTJs in a good mood. Often they're sherry, optimistic, future-oriented, positive. They believe anything will work out. They have high hopes about you and about themselves. And, you know, here's the thing, you know, a lot of their shadow functions stretch into ESFJ domains. So they can sometimes take on these properties and they can be quite supportive if they need to be, they can be quite nice if they need to be, they can be quite friendly and co collaborative and uh, open to connect if it's necessary. They're ready to put all that in and they're ready to invest a lot of energy into themselves and into the tribe and into others if need be. They are prepared to be nice, prepared to be supportive, prepared to be your friend, prepared to help you out as much as necessary for you both to succeed. So that's the ENTJ personality type. I hope this video helped you understand a little bit about the ENTJ and I hope it helped you dismiss some of the stereotypes you might have come to know about the ENTJ personality type. Thanks for watching and hope to see you all in the next video.